Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Lady Survival here. So we are sitting uh, in the World of Warcraft expansion reveal live stream thing that's happening in like 60 seconds. Um, so I'm going to be here and reacting to the whole thing, uh, getting the cinematic reaction and all that good stuff. I guess that we're going to be getting started soon and I hope that you guys enjoy my reaction to everything. I hope it's good. Um, we're of course expecting a lot of dragon stuff. Dragon Isles, Dragonflight, Alexstrasza, anything like that. Whoa. Oh my god. That is loud. That is some good music though, but that was loud. I was not prepared for that. I really hope that my sound is good because, um, yeah, no, I'm having a hard time. I'm like trying to listen to Aklon, but also do this. This is random, but I just realized that they're putting these little like circles and going through all of the expansions leading up to the next one. That is so cool. We had uh, Vanilla and they were playing like Elven music and stuff and then and showing like pictures from like Classic WoW. And then they did the next one, which is the green one. And it was Burning Crusade and they were putting Burning Crusade pictures. And now we're on Wrath of the Lich King with Wrath music and Wrath pictures. So I'm getting feels right now. Like we are going there. Like we're like working our way up and oh, I love it. I love it. Last night I like dyed my hair. I got my hair done on Friday, like I had it bleached and it was finally pretty light, like pretty blonde. So last night I was like messing with it and kind of trying to like make it more silver and purple kind of. So I like put some stuff in my hair and yeah, so it's kind of like silver again. Um, it doesn't look as good in real life as it does on camera. Like I feel like my camera is making it actually look silver and even, but in real life it's like splotchy as hell and like some spots are purple, some spots are blue, some spots are still like blondy yellow, but it looks pretty good on camera and I also put in some extensions. So I'm feeling like my old self again, which is really, really nice. And I'm just really excited. We're at Mists of Pandaria, you guys. Oh, I kind of wish that I was streaming, but I just, I don't know what to do because I feel like I'm so awkward. I feel like I'm so scared of streaming because I'm scared that like, if something embarrassing happens, that like, I'm just gonna be really embarrassed and I'm gonna be like, shit, that happened live, basically. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. I think that having anxiety, you just feel like something bad is gonna happen at all times. And the thought of like, live streaming something bad happening at all times, um, kind of freaks me out. <laughs> so excited. I'm so, so, so excited. I've like needed new WoW stuff in my life. Really bad. Okay, BFA, Teldrassil. I can't believe that all of this stuff with Sylvanas happened and like apparently that Alex, the Frosty Abbey guy, like just kind of made her burn Teldrassil and it technically shouldn't have even happened and he took her down this horrible path for no reason and I mean... I liked BFA and I liked all the stuff that Solanus did, but I thought that there was like a greater goal in mind and that there was actually like a reason that would pay off for why she did it. Like, I don't know. I just feel like it wasn't worth it and yeah. So again, going into this, I think that we're all expecting dragons. Dragon Isles, Dragonflight, Alexstrasza, Illidan, Arthas. I'm just like throwing, no, not Arthas. I'm just being silly. We were making a bingo card in Aqualons. Uh, Thing, his stream and we were like joking about Arthas coming back but Illidan might come back probably not in this cinematic but I'm definitely expecting Alexstrasza I am maybe kind of expecting Lordaeron's Blight to be cleared from Alexstrasza like at the Wrathgate and maybe Teldrassil being restored again I don't know if that's going to happen in the cinematic but we're at the 30 second mark I'm expecting something about renewal and life and being on Azeroth I'm expecting player housing there's a ton of stuff that we talked about in Akalon's stream on the bingo card that I can't remember right now, but I'm expecting a lot of things. Let's hope it's good. I'm very excited. I'm also scared. I hope that my sound is good because I don't know. I've tried really, really hard and I'm sorry if it's not, but oh, here we go. I have butterflies. Oh, okay. I'm going, I'm going to stay this size so I can see the chat. No, I'm not. I'm going full screen. I have to go full screen. <laughs> Just like a recap of all the badass moments 
in all WoW history, yes. Oh my god, immediately I feel like I'm gonna cry. Okay. I have some feelings and emotions going into this, you guys. The next chapter that was on the bingo card starts now. I just want to cry. I'm excited. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm John Height, General Manager for Warcraft, and with me today are my friends Ian Hazakostas, who is the Game Director for World of Warcraft, and Holly Longdale, who leads up the production team for WoW Classic. I really appreciate you tuning in. I know we're really excited to be able to give you updates on what's happening in World of Warcraft. But first, I want to thank our community for all the feedback you've given us this year, and especially our community council. You've helped shape and influence the updates that we've done recently and what you're going to see in the upcoming year. I mean, really, for Shadowlands in particular, the story of the last nine months or so of, of this expansion is all about the community. And it's shaped by what we've been hearing from them and us realizing as a team that we just collectively needed to do a better job of making sure the community felt heard. And so that led us to the change that we made in 915, <laughs> but also really re-examining some of the assumptions and foundations address. of World of Warcraft about things like character investment and mains versus alts, or how catch-up should work, or the appropriate role of friction in our systems. And I think 915 represented a step in the direction of letting players have more freedom to play World of Warcraft the way they want to play it. And we really built our Eternity Zen content update from the ground up around those principles. What are some of the things that the community said that, that influenced your decisions for Eternity Zen? Things like the method and pacing of acquisition of the Covenant Legendary item, tons of tuning, and I think every step of the way, um, we were listening to make sure that we were carrying forward those lessons learned in the course of 915 into Eternity's End and beyond. So, WoW Classic was yeah. really, came about because of the community. Love yeah, WoW they Classic. continue to help guide and support us as Classic evolves. World of Warcraft has always been about the world and the players that inhabit it. And we are in a lot of ways curators and caretakers mm -hmm. of that journey and of that experience. And so once this classic community formed and grew, we had to listen to them. It's this tide of listening to the community and paying attention to what is a good experience for our players now. Um, and where we really saw a sea change in this idea is with our Season of Mastery realm, which is a season of Fresh Start Classic. And initially we were talking about it like it was going to be like a fresh start. Let's try this experiment in a season. It'll be about a year long. And then when the community found out about it, we started seeing this upswell. Yeah, the team just took that idea and ran with it yes. and turned, you know, what started out as a small community project mm -hmm into this Soul of Iron system that became a centerpiece <laughs> of Season of Mastery and a whole new opt-in hardcore mode that we've seen communities built around. Yeah. Lots of, you know, thrilling victory and painful defeat. <laughs> five um, hours, I made it five <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, and it continues. Like Burning Crusade Classic, we wanted to balance the Paladin seals between Horde and Alliance, so we made an addition there. We wouldn't have gotten there without the community's input so influence the community, you've got another update and pretty significant controversial change for this. Yeah, cross-faction play uh, coming coming in 925, oh, wow. uh, which is on, on our public test realm now. Uh, it's actually a big Ian, cross-faction. Yep. <laughs> You're breaking with a 17-year tradition. Yeah, it's something, it was not an easily made decision by any means. You know, That's and I think be this fun. is another one of those areas where really we try to take to heart community feedback and requests and ask ourselves as a team whether there's a way to accommodate such an earnestly held desire and still feel like we're being true to the to the roots of the game. You know, the players desire to play with their friends who might prefer a different faction or to play with the faction that they more closely identify with. Yeah, I think that that's a good thing. Even though their ray group is elsewhere. It's really important for me. I play a lot of alts and I love absorbing the story for each race and Same. having Same. that ability to play with all of my friends across factions is fantastic. At the end of the day, the battle cry is for the horde. It's not against the Alliance. It's not death to the Alliance. It's about pride in one's faction. And I think there's a way to preserve that and even strengthen that while giving players yep. the ability to make the same choice we've 100%. seen the greatest heroes make time and time again. I can't wait to do this. I'm seeing a lot of my friends that I never knew had a max level character in the other faction suddenly come out of the woodwork. And then 
you know, with these this, these cross faction groups, many of them are going to be diving into something new that we're doing to kind of cap off Shadowlands, a season four, uh, kind of a remix, a little bit, a bit of a greatest hits, revisiting our, all of our raid zones across the expansion, bringing in some familiar I older like favorites like into the, the Mythic Plus job. rotation. Like I want and, to be you know, her. We recognize and this just is kind of a, a like closing chapter, a little bit of a send off to wow. Shadowlands. That'd be so fun. As everyone gets ready for what happens next, what will come next, <laughs> want to give you know a fun new challenge for everyone to sink their teeth into. Really cool stuff for for modern WoW players. I'm super excited about the gear upgrades that you're going to give me and the chance to go back and play some of those those awesome raids. There's a lot to explore. Very exciting. For our next adventure in World of Warcraft, we're going to go back to Azeroth. Oh yes. We're going to a space with high fantasy. I mean, our fans of Azeroth for a long time. This has been kind of the foundation of much of the lore of WoW. Mm -hmm. So without further ado. Let's watch the cinematic. Oh gosh, okay, we're going in. Oh my God. The world has been sundered. Oh. It cries out in pain. We must go to its aid. Dragons. <laughs> we entrust our ancestral home to you, the Watchers. Wow, this is so cool. We've like never ever gotten a cinematic like this. This is cool. Let the land slumber, hidden even from our own eyes. Wow. You will feel our return in the waking of the land. Then you must light the beacon of tear hold, lest the path home be lost to us forever. This is so cool. thousand whole years. Damn, that guy got fucked. Only one that woke up. Like, I'm just gonna go for it even though everyone else is sleeping right now. Oh my gosh. Oh no. He's the only one left. Oh my god, he has to do it. Oh. Okay. Wow. Is it gonna like shoot a beam up? Oh my 
my god. Oh, no. Oh god, that's so sad. I don't even know who this is, and I feel like I have such a connection to him already. Oh, oh my god! Oh, it's closer. Okay, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. That was so, so quick. Okay. Oh my god. Why <laughs> Is healing. But her fate is yet uncertain. Guys, we're actually going to the Dragon Isles. Oh my god. I'm so emotional Together, right now. We shall be Azeroth's protectors once again. Here, oh my the god. new age of dragons shall begin. Oh my god, this is so cool. Dragon flight. Okay, that's a cool logo. Guys, I'm like crying because we're just going back to like the dragons. Like, and I literally. Dragons! Dragons! <laughs> this is so cool. No one saw it coming. I no just one saw read. It coming. Um, Carefully kept secret. Don the Aspects, seriously, like, I mean, two months ago. What did so we just see there? I feel the like awakening I'm just kinda... of the Dragon Isles. <sighs> the return this is so cool. of dragons. This is so cool. The dawn of a new age. Right, we've uh... seen Rathian searching. For and his this father's is why legacy, he couldn't searching find for the Dragon, the Dragon Isles. Isles. There's a reason why he hasn't been able to find exactly. them until now. Oh my gosh. The beacon going oh off. Is that summoning the dragons? It is removing the concealment that had hidden the Dragon Isles from the world, but also beckoning the dragons back urgently. How did Alex Traza get there so quick? I've seen <laughs> pretty good variety of uh, locales oh man, within the Dragon Isles. It's yes. The Dragon Isles, as kind of standard for WoW expansion, consist of five zones, four standard leveling zones, and a new starter so zone that we'll get to in a second. Cool. Can oh you talk gosh. a little bit about how the team found ways to thread the dragon aspects throughout the environments? The, the Dragon Isles are a place that is lush and primal, bursting so with elemental energy. As Azeroth wow. herself reawakens, those primal forces are expressed throughout the environment, whether it's magma activity, volcanic activity, whether it's the icy wastes of the Azure wow. Span. And each one of those has a connection oh to God. a dragon fight that we've it's seen before. So and it's gonna beautiful. be an amazing place for players to arrive at and explore. All right, you know I'm gonna ask. <laughs> yes, okay, so <laughs> can, can, can I be zones, a dragon? Let's, be, let, let, let's start getting into some features here and what dragon flight means for you as well as just a place. Um, so first off, yes, we have an all new playable race, <gasps> the Drakthir race. Yeah. Oh, uh, this cool. is a dragon oh God, and draconic cool. race, but dragons in, in Warcraft have the ability to take on oh, a humanoid form. God, that's cool. What classes can they Kinda be? Kind of like Worgen. They have unique abilities as literally a dragon. That doesn't quite fit any of our existing classes. And so what we're doing is this is not just a new race, but it's also a new class. You know, adding a new race to World of Warcraft and not just an allied race is something that oh, we don't God, do lightly. Oh, God, that's so cool. But telling this expansion, oh. the story, so focused around dragons, felt like the perfect time for it. So if you are a Drakthir, you will be the Evoker class. Drakthir can only be evokers, evokers can only be Drakthir. And the reason why only a Drakthir could be an evoker is that an evoker is really combining the ability to call upon the magic of the different aspects with the unique physical gifts that a Drakthir has, the ability to actually take flight and do an Anixia style strafing deep breath over the battlefield, land on the other wow. side, knock everyone back with a wing buffet, and then unleash your magical abilities. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, that's cool. The Evoker has two specializations. They're a hybrid of either ranged DPS or healer. And they wear male armor. Cool. We figured, you know, with oh the God, new hero classes class we've added over the years, we have enough melee. We don't need and more of those. Male and female models. And also, I'm see I don't need any more, any more leather wearers. The raid leaders are going to oh love you for that. <laughs> so exactly. This is definitely sick. a hero class. And so that means that, you know, like the Death Knights before them or Demon Hunters, they will be starting level 58, and then they're gonna have a new starter zone. So they're gonna have a slightly different journey into the Dragon Isles as opposed to wow. the rest of us that are sailing there oh from God. other parts of Azeroth. I'm gonna wanna play one. Can you talk a little like bit about the customization? Like what is gonna How be able to pick? identify my drag oh. character? Basically anything and everything. You know, skin color, oh, hair color, God, jewelry, oh, tattoos, okay, okay. other adornments. You Human can make form. this character the expression of, of your identity in Azeroth. 
Human new zone, form, though. New class. Yep. New oh race. God. Oh God. Tell us I about some of the, the system updates yeah, or so features. Of course, a new expansion so brings with it, cool. you know, new systems, new features. And I think in recent expansions, one of the things we've tended to do is really have these deep features that were closely tied to a specific expansion that would then get left behind as we moved on. Mm -hmm. And we've heard loud and clear from players that, you know, it's kind of a bummer to start off every new expansion by leaving a large part of your character behind, by leaving a large part of your progression behind. Mm -hmm. So this time around, what we're doing is really pouring all of our energy me. into me. permanent <laughs> revamps, overhauls, and improvements to World of Warcraft's core systems. Things like our progression systems, in this case, our talent system, is something that we want to completely revamp. We want to take a look at our UI. We want to take a look at professions. So with the talent revamp and the arrival of Classic, did you learn anything about how our talents work? I think seeing a new generation of players play with those talents and work through those talent trees really underscored some of the things that, frankly, we lost mm -hmm. when we shifted to the Mists of Pandaria-style talents and beyond. A big piece of that was some of just the granularity, the feeling of getting a level and spending a point to customize your character oh, to make I yourself a bit better trees. in some specific way. But also, you know, the, that sense of hybridity that you could have, that's something that we've largely lost. And so the new talent system oh, avoids cool directly pitting player cool. power throughput choices directly against those sort of utility hybrid choices because we know that there's always a right outcome there. And we also understand that you know, there's it. a lot of strength in the flexibility of the modern talent system to let players customize their talents for a particular encounter or for dungeons versus PvP, and we don't want to lose any of that. So John, UI? Oh my god. <laughs> 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 yes, I got this 30-inch monitor trying to keep track of where I am on the map, all my buffs, and oh, over here, what's going on in chat. It has literally made my eyes go like this. <laughs> so, yep. you're, and you're not alone in that. We've made a lot of incremental changes and additions over the years, but really, this is a revamp. This is an overhaul. And oh God, so, I'm we're so excited stoked. to really modernize the look and feel while staying true to the origins of World of Warcraft. Now, at the same time, we're not looking to take away the sort of power user customization there, add-ons are still there they if you want them. They have a summoning stone, that is so cool. But we want a much cool. better default, out-of-the-box experience for all players, new and old alike. And can I reduce elements, remove elements? If I want to explore the world and, and see the beauty of Azeroth. Oh, when it comes nice. to specific elements, as much as possible, we want to let players choose what to show and what to hide so that they can control that's it themselves. That's so good. You, you don't even need add-ons now. I have a critical question about this. Go on. Can I wear a chef's hat? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Our approach to professions in Dragonflight is really all about delivering on fantasy and identity as a crafter. And so oh, if you want to be a serious blacksmith, if you want God. to be a great leather worker, that you want to deliver cool. the ability to this is invest on the bingo card. time and energy into that, professions become revamped. a master crafter, be able to make items that okay. are in demand, yes. interact with the community. I want to One do of the big it. pieces that we want to do to support that is a new work order system to have a bit more convenience than just spamming trade chat all day. But if you are someone, you're not yourself a blacksmith, but you have a bunch of mats and you want them forged into a great sword, you can put that work order up, list your mats, offer a commission, and a skilled blacksmith can come that along so and make cool. you the weapon of your dreams. That is so cool. I think we left out one thing, though. Oh, God, Be a drag there. Go to Dragon Isles. Can I have a dragon? Oh. What's the fantasy of dragons, if not soaring over the lands? And so we're really excited to introduce a feature that we're calling Dragon Riding. It's dynamic with you know, everything from momentum to dive bombs, the ability to you know, just sort of build that speed up and oh, feel the world rushing so past you in a way this that so should good. be much more exciting than traditional flight that we've made available in the past, but that's also available for players through a customizable dragon mount right from the start. So oh, I love it. This is a skill you learn over time, right? To become an mount. awesome dragon rider. Yes, you'll be able to sort of upgrade aspects of your flight, oh God, but you will have cool this new form of flight from the start. And the dragon Looks companion so that real. you have is, of course, very thoroughly customizable, which is a new oh, a new oh thing for God, us for mounts. Like a pastel this is dragon. not just a generic dragon that everyone has, but a drake that is yours. Wow. You know, what, what do you want okay, the scales really to look cool. like? Horns, the that's shape really of its cool. head, other attachments, armor this pieces, is and more. Like the coolest Take your thing that they've this ever is done. so cool. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so the Dragonflight expansion is going to see players leveling so to 70, going to the all-new okay, continent of leveling. the Dragon Isles, okay. which consists of five zones, four standard leveling zones, and a new starter zone for our cool. Drakthir class, as well as a range of systems revamps, such as a new talent system, 
an overhaul and update to our UI, and an wow. entirely fresh look at professions with more depth than ever before. Also getting around the Dragon Isles is gonna come in the form of Dragon Riding, which lets you customize and upgrade your own mount so that you can fly in a sense from the start. And of course, cool. as with any new expansion, That's we have good. a new set of dungeons, a raid, and much more to come. We also have an alpha that will be starting up in, in, in the future. Check out our website for more information and keep an eye out for those opt-in signups if you want to help us so test dope. out Dragonflight and give us even more feedback to make it better. We do have a deep dive that follows this, so please stay around. Classic players, we haven't forgotten about you. You could probably guess Yay. where we're gonna go next. One of the all-time favorite uh. expansions for World of Warcraft. Let's watch the cinematic. Oh my god, I thought that they were just gonna show the old one. Got it. Did you think we had Gosh. My king yet. I feel like this is redeeming the shitty the Arthas end that we got. The very forests of Lordaeron whispered the name Arthas. Chills, literal chills. When my days have come to an end, you shall be king. Oh my god, that's so good. I feel like the shitty, like, wisp ending that we got for Arthas and that recent cinematic, I feel like this kind of makes up for it. Like, at least we got kind of a tribute to him again, you know? It's just incredible, isn't it? That's Every cool. time I that see cool. the cinematic, I, really like I get that. chills. No pun intended, I do, I get chills. Uh -huh. As you Same. saw, Wrath of the Lich King Classic is coming this year. That'll that be brings good. back so many memories. When you see that cinematic, what do you remember from Wrath of the Lich King? Anytime you want to talk about undead frozen dragons, how can you not go back to Cindergosa <laughs> yep. as the source? That Cindergosa. was the first expansion I played with my youngest son. Mm -hmm. So I can remember on that platform, black goo and you know chunks of ice falling off and, and having to repeat that battle with the Lich King. But when we finally downed him, it was such an incredible moment. He jumped up out of his room and I jumped up out of my oh. office. We're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> did it. <laughs> so it's a very lasting tale for Someone me. Someone is messing So as you know, with this expansion, oh. you will in pre-patch be able to play Let's the see. Death Knight. They will start oh at level Oh my god, 55. are you watching it? You I don't have to have a high level here. character to make a Death Knight. Yes. So everyone will be able to make one. Um, We're excited to give players some time before Wrath officially them. launches to get geared up and ready to jump in to Northrend with everybody else. And there are so many zones and areas to explore in Northrend. So and I want us to good. talk about some of our favorites. So for me, Grizzly Hills has a very special place in my heart. The music was some of the best I've experienced mm -hmm. in World of Warcraft. I still make my way all the way up to Storm Peaks to try and find the Time Lost Proto Drake and have <laughs> yet to get it. I've got I to got say the Time Lost Proto Drake. The, the wide open nature of the zone, Wormerest Temple in the center of it. It's an unforgettable expansion wow. as both a developer and a player and kind of making that transition. Wow. I feel from like that's one so cool the other. because now let's Wrath talk is about very like some changes. themed so and stuff. So one thing we looked at is Dungeon Finder expansion. and it that's feels really like cool. how we envision classic Dungeon Finder is not a good fit for our community. That was mm -hmm. kind of the first step that may have eroded some of that social fabric. Now, as, as people have gone through the experience of going back to vanilla, rebuilding those groups, relying on each other, not wanting necessarily a random participant just to show up and then leave. Yep. Yeah, that makes total sense. But today, you can do that in Shadowlands. You'll be able to do that in Dragonflight. It's a self-selected group of people who specifically want that different experience. Yes. Let's make sure that's what we continue to give them. That leads right into arena teams in Burning Crusade Classic. So we listen to the community and we remove that because individual rating is preferable and better experience for them than arena teams. Also, with Wrath of the Lich King, Barbershop, which allows you to customize your character. Oh, cool. We're going to be That's adding good. a few more options that were not 
existing when RAF launched. But also there's another side of this where we are not going to charge a real money fee. It was a paid character customization fee, right? Yeah. It seems the right thing to do that that just be available in game for yeah. gold and we mm -hmm. add more options to it, right? It's yeah. sort of like spell batching mm -hmm. in a sense. There's a lot of technical advancements and it's not about the philosophy of what makes classic classic and what brings people together. It's just what's the better experience and let's not artificially restrict something that we can provide a better version of just for the sake of nostalgia. And this is, we're happy to say this is one of those cases. So, Wrath. The level cap's being increased to level 80, so we'll be introducing a level 70 boost so that players who want to get in with their friends or just explore Northrend right away will be able to do that. You can apply it to a Death Knight, but you will be able to use it otherwise. And of course, we have Inscription, a whole yep. new profession, so we're really excited about that. Yeah, and as we continue this road to Wrath, we're gonna be looking to getting a lot more feedback on beta, and we'll make changes as we need to such an exciting time to be playing World of Warcraft. We have the return of the Wrath of Lich King for classic fans and taking us somewhere new with Dragonflight. We're so excited to be able to bring these adventures to you. Don't forget, there's a deep dive on Dragonflight where you're gonna get a lot more information. Thank you so much for spending this time with us and we'll see you in Azeroth. And we'll see you in Northrend. And in the Dragon Isles. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Okay, Dragonflight Deep Dive starts now. Weaving the story. Hi there, welcome to the Dragonflight oh, Deep Dive. Stuff. I'm Steve Denuser. And yes. I'm Taryn Gregory. And Starting it off here, we're gonna talk about the setting back, and the story of Dragonflight. Later. We've got this great expansion, uh, oh, exciting pre-render trailer that everyone <laughs> just watched. So time. let's talk about the setting for Dragonflight, the Dragon Isles. Dragon Isles have been known for a long time in Warcraft history as a mysterious place where mm -hmm. the dragons came from long ago, but we never knew much more than that. We're going to this place that is kind of the broodlands of all the dragon flights, the place where they nested, where they built their civilization. The Dragon Isles was the center of the dragon's kingdom when the world was young and the mortal races were just starting to form kingdoms of their own. But when the Legion invaded, for that War of the Ancients, that sundering that resulted from the, the explosion of the Well of Eternity. Literal the world. Literal sundering of the yeah. continents of Azeroth. And because of the breaking of the world, that magic kind of drained away and the land went dormant. So they had to leave the Dragon Isles behind. Mm -hmm. And as we saw in the pre-render, they left behind some Titan Watchers to look over the land and when Someday, they hoped that elemental energy would resurge once again and draw the dragons home, reestablish their kingdom. And that's when the message goes out to the flights and they feel it in their bones. Now it's the time for the sky to light up with the colors of the aspects once again Why and for I Alex Straza and crying. the others to come home. But the land has changed a lot in all these uh, thousands of years they've like been I'm away. So and some very to, old like, threats have awakened as well. We're looking into the culture of dragons as they exist in today. Warcraft. Dragons as we know them today were very different in the early past, the early history of Azeroth. They were much more primitive, much more savage. What oh we now God, know as proto-dragons. And then or some no of the dragons were empowered to become the aspects. The green flight, red flight, blue flight, bronze flight, black flight, each with unique powers, each with the ability to protect the world in different ways. These pillars of draconic power appointed to defend Azeroth from threats within and without. The dragons used that power both for good in the case of most of the aspects Aspects, but also for nefarious reasons in the case of nefarious, the black nefarian. dragonflight <laughs> led by Neltharion who would become Deathwing. And what we will find in Dragonflight is that some of these ancient divisions run deep. And so it begs the question, wow. where do we go from here? If this is an opportunity to reclaim their legacy, to be the protectors as the cinematic mentioned that they once were. To do that, they're going oh, to need the help cool. of our heroes, oh our players, God. to come to the Dragon Isles with them and face some of these reawakening challenges because it's not just that this land is peacefully waiting for the dragons to return and reclaim it. There's those old enemies that have awakened as well. Yeah. One of those being a race of kind of elemental half giants, the Jaradin. The Dragon Isles isn't oh, just wow. populated by dragons or mm. just by the Jaradin. There's also many other occupants here in the Dragon Isles that have been here either just recently or for a while, including a fan favorite coming back, the Ooh. Tuskar. That's oh, going to be awesome. We've got other God. cultures there as Tally well in the Dragon Isles. We're going to find out, right out about 
a civilization of centaurs that predates the ones that arose on Kalimdor much mm -hmm. later. And some wow. of our favorite characters that we've seen over the last few expansions, such as Rathian. And whether he's ready to step up into a leadership role, or if there are other alternatives out there that would be better suited to the job of being the aspect of the Black Dragonfly. I think one thing the players are going to be really excited about this expansion is the new playable race, the Drakthir. That's right. Oh, yeah. And this is something that Neltharion, before he was Deathwing, before he went full crazy world dragon, that he put into motion? Neltharion saw those primalists that were kind of breaking away from the aspects and what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, in those first experiments, he took the essence of dragons, their strength, their nobility, their wisdom, and he combined it with that scrappiness, that, that adaptability that the mortal races had, and he wanted to use that to create the ideal soldier wow. in his mind, the Drakthir. Exploration is really one of the key themes of this expansion. You're, we're gonna be going to this ancient place that the dragons left behind long ago. So we've made these huge zones with all kinds of places to delve into and find little treasures and little secrets tucked away. It's gonna be a lot of fun for players to be exploring these landscapes. And there's so much architectural history and how clearly aspirational was the kingdom of the dragons and how it lost so it much. Kind of and like a the themes of trying to return to that, to try to find your legacy, to try to figure out who you were before everything went awry. But there's questions, you know, thematic questions of what does it mean to be true to your legacy? Are we going to repeat the mistakes of the past? The dragons have had to learn those lessons just like the mortal kingdoms have had to. And I think that's one of the reasons why the dragons see this now as the time that they have to return and they have to step up once again as protectors of Azeroth. We're helping the dragons because the dragons have helped us in the past too. So by using the Explorers League and the Reliquary together, that allows us to delve into some of that history. And when I look you know, upon the Dragon Isles and all of its visual splendor, I get so excited for the prospect of a truly Azerothian adventure alongside Caligos, oh, along with Rathian and Ebonhorn, um, with Isera's daughter Marithra, as that each one of them good. is trying to find their own wow. flight. I am taken oh. by the exploration and the potential for adventure and just new horizons within this world. There's going to be old stories from that time past, that history that only the dragons knew for the longest time. We're gonna be able to explore that. It really feels like just a breath of fresh air. So now we're gonna turn things over to some of our colleagues who will take you on that deep dive into the locations and the features of Dragonflight. Hello, I'm Stephanie. I'm Josh. I'm Jackie. And I'm Gary. And we're part of the teams that are building the first two zones, the Encounter and the Dragon Isles, the Waking Shore and the Onaran Plains. Wow, the, the very Onaran first zone Plains. in Dragonfly you're gonna come to is the Waking Beautiful. Shores. It's wild, untamed land. It's waking up around you too, and the elements are just going wow. crazy. The art team again has hit it out of the park. You'll see like a lava mountain flowing in through the beach, giant proto dragons swooping down, gobbling up members of your expedition. We have such rife opportunities to show elementals rising up because of the crazy magic that's flying around. The one of the things I love is just how you get to the Dragon Isles, mm -hmm. right? So you're gonna get on your boat in Stormwind or Argrimmar, and the first thing you do is sail between like the dragon ruin architectures the boats oh, come right God, alongside each other. You can jump from one boat to the oh, other and just start causing havoc on the other faction's boat. Oh, for that's those cool. who love PvP, this is a great opportunity for Mormon. That's cool. Sure. It's free for all out there. It's going to be great. Yeah, <laughs> but it's okay. Awesome. There's an innkeeper on the beach so that if you're in that situation and you don't want to be in war mode anymore, you can just hop out right there. The Reliquary wow. and the Explorers League are working together. The Horden Alliance are sending an expedition together. It's not the military, it's not the soldiers. This is the scientists, the settlers, exploring this new land. So it's a lot more optimistic tone. One of my favorite things about the Waking Shores is the Red Dragonfly, led by Queen oh, Alexstrasza, the Life Binder. God, they I have the her. mandate of nurturing and protecting all life, which means Horde and Alliance, Gorlocks, trolls, everybody. So they take that duty seriously. When the Horde and the Alliance come to the Waking Shores, they want to be there to help guide the people through the new land and welcome them. But they're not the only one in the Waking Shores. We have the ancestral home of the Black Dragonflight there too, which has fallen on tough times since Deathwing's descent. And so Rathian's coming over to the Isles with us 
And he's going to try and come to terms with the state of the dragon flight, nice. which is a few loyal draconids and dragon spawn trying to hold their ground. What can the future of the dragon flight be if it's just Rathian? Because it's not just the dragons that are coming back to the Dragon Isles, but also their longtime rival, the Jardin. I love the Jardin so much. They're half giants that wield the power of magma. And when the Waking Shores and the Dragon Isles went to slumber, they also slumbered. They're back now, and they are ready to raise chaos. Yeah, they're massive. They're riding giant lava mammoths parading around, just stomping on your face. And they were the enemies of the Dragonfly for so long. They fought against the Red Dragonfly, hunted dragons down, and they're really taking this opportunity to rise up. As the Red Dragonfly have the mandate of nurturing life, they don't want to just stomp out the Jardin completely, but they want to make sure that they don't have the power to affect those around them negatively, to make sure they don't go on a rampage and destroy the ecosystem that has been created here. And so those are awesome things in the Waking Shore, but Seth, there really is only one right answer for the <laughs> best thing in Waking Shores, right? What? This is true. Ducks. We finally have those webbed feet hooligans in our game. We cracked the technology. We got them. They can figure it out. They yep. can fly. You should be proud. Thank you. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. The Onaran planes come right after the Waking Shores. Mm -hmm. It's so breathtaking at Green first glance. The Onaran planes are big, wide open planes. And the player is going to be constricted a little bit. And then you see this big contrast of a zone. We don't always get that opportunity, that cinematic moment where the player can have a framed view when they see this area. Come out and you got that postcard shot of that. the planes. And then you see this giant fire proto dragon breathing fire and a herd of centaur like harpoon down the yeah. proto dragon and crash into the ground. And the first thing you get to do is go help them kill the proto dragon. Like how cool is that? Who is Onara? <laughs> Onara is the wild god of the wind. Oh. And she's appeared before as like this big spirit eagle. She's the one who guided the centaur to the Dragon Isles many, many years ago. She blessed them, took their caravan across, and then showed them the plains. How fun at the beginning of this expansion was exploring the culture of the centaur. The centaur are these mighty, awesome hunters that Back when they first came to the Dragon Isles, they fought the green dragons all day long. Eventually, they realized that we're strong, you're strong. Maybe we should stop decimating each other's people. <laughs> um, we'll make peace, we'll make an agreement. You guys hang out in the groves, and the centaur will hang out in the plains. But now, the dragons have been gone for 10,000 years. And the centaur have come so far since then. Mm -hmm. And they've been here, and they've been existing and developing their culture. They all came over as one clan led by the mighty Maruk and Tira, and they founded a new life here. So if you want to get across, you have to follow their rules and their traditions. You have to earn their trust. You are the first outsiders to come in generations upon generations. The centaur might rule the open plains, but the green dragons make their home in okay. the groves. And those groves so, are absolutely sure gorgeous. Off, but... And how great a job it is that we have where I can take all of this beautiful artwork and build these beautiful fantasy groves, high fantasy. We want to do lots of things with an open plain, and we want to be creative with that. But we're restraining ourselves by letting the zone sing, letting the horizon tell the story. We certainly couldn't have done that in the vanilla WoW. No, definitely <laughs> yeah. not. The zones are so big, and you can see so far, especially in Onaran Plains. Mm -hmm. So we talked to the engineers, mm -hmm. and we actually increased that distance. It wow. spurs you on to want to adventure cool. and look through the zone and explore everything. The interesting thing for me is we have all these conflicts with the Dragonflights. There's missing dragons, there's battles, there's so much crazy stuff happening, but that's not really all we're doing. There's so much extra fun activities for people to do. And the greatest thing is that you need to figure out exactly what's going on and help solve all the problems that are just sprouting up everywhere. We're just really excited to tell a story that's grounded in Azeroth and exploration. There's so much more to talk about. But now, we're going to have some folks talking about the next two zones that players are going to experience in the Dragon Isles. Wow, Thaldrasis. Hello, everyone. My name is Kate. I'm Christy. I'm Kate. 
I'm Sean. We're going to talk today about Thaldrassus and the Azure Span. Mm -hmm. So Azure Span is going to be the third zone that players adventure through, and it's one of our biggest zones that we've done in the Dragonfly, maybe even to date. I like we it. knew it was going to be like the largest visual elevation change, and it really started with this great concept art. When we first were taking a look uh, at the design, oh, that's cool. we kept coming back to one of our favorite wrath zones, which was Grizzly Hills. Mm. And we really wanted that to take that, but wowify sure. it more. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been up to the Bay Area, but in the morning, that coastal fog comes in and dips down into the redwoods, and that sun shines through. That's really what we wanted to encapsulate oh, yeah. with this That's forest. And not only do we have zone. redwoods, but we've got all different types of trees. Eventually, it'll wow. break open into this wide open like, tundra um, that's just like golden and red, and you'll Ashara. reach up to another level of elevation where you get to see the snow. Wow. The majority of the zone is covered in snow and ice. We have giant Beautiful. frozen waterfalls, oh ice rivers as far as I the eye it. can I see. And Sean, I know in the forest, we can expect our first creatures. We have a small group that lives there called the Knolls. These gnolls are all throughout the forest in Azure Span. They've made this their home. Some gnolls of strange oh, magic that we're going to find out what exactly hey, that's about. Snow gnolls, or as I call them, the snolls, <laughs> uh, up in the winter area. And then some regular gnolls that are just going to be around the forest area. So then we go into the big open tundra where we <laughs> meet our second group, the Tuscar. It's going to be really neat to explore their culture a lot more. And those kids are adorable. I absolutely love the Tuscar. <laughs> Honestly, all my downtime is probably just me hanging out with the Tuscar. <laughs> So it's been a little while since you've seen them. We remember the Tuscar from Wrath of the Lich King. They're also getting a nice cool upres for their models, along with expanding their culture. So there are going to be male Tuscar, female Tuscar, Tuscar kids. Wow. So we're going to yeah, fight alongside them, screaming. which includes help from a certain group of dragons, the Blue Dragons. We're going to follow the story of Caligos, oh our I blue dragon it. buddy from model. the Kieran Tor, that and he's going to be good. adventuring into Syndragos's archives. It's a giant zone. There's a lot of surprises. When we're done there, we head over to Aldrazas. Aldrazas. It's really incredible because you will be going through some of the previous zones and seeing a lot of ruins uh, mm -hmm. wow, for the dragon very, like, uh, buildings. But when you get to Thaldrazis, everything is perfectly intact. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. It's pristine. It is Pretty. the seat of power for all five dragon flights and home of the dragons. It feels that way with the huge vertical mountains. Wow. We've got okay. these great cave it. systems where you may end up finding little dragon mm -hmm. hordes. My favorite dragon flight right now is the bronze. They've got a really cool area in Thaldrazis, and their magic is time. There's so many cool story hooks that we Whoa, could dig into there. There's so cool. many cool gameplay options. And we have a little bit of an adventure for players. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. We really wanted it to feel like their old stomping grounds. One of the really cool features is going to be the main city and player hub for this expansion, Valdraken. It is a culmination of all of the dragon's efforts to put together what a city would look like. So we ended up having a bunch of really fun small vignettes where you can see that the blue dragon flight is hosting a public library and the red and green dragon flights both have their own separate gardens. We'll also have um, some convenient services mm -hmm. for players, including an auction house in the city, yep. which will be really nice if you're looking for more exotic wares. The thing that really sold me on Daldrazis was the initial concept art we got of Tearhold. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. And this is a 10,000-year-old Titan technological marvel. Oh, Tearhold wow, has yeah. these awesome the aqueducts that actually it. come out from the structure all the way to the city across the valley. And in the cinematic, there's just this amazing shot where you see Alexstrasza swoop under one of them, and there's splashes of water oh, cresting good. across her wings. So when players are flying around themselves, they get to have their Alex Straza moment. What an incredible wow, place and filled with cool. so much history. Mm -hmm. Tearhold was built by Tear. He was a Titan Keeper back in the day who helped the Aspects fight Galakrond. And when they settled on the Dragon Isles, he built this facility. Wow. And even though Tear's gone, the dragons have held him in reverence. But that was 10,000 years ago, and they've let the Titans maintain the place. An incredible amount of history has happened since then. Lights have been nearly wiped out. There have been invasions, betrayals. Aspects have died. And these are the kind of things that leave marks on a society. So now they're all back here and they're all here together. As we were designing the zone mm -hmm. and the, the city itself, we're trying to figure out, you know, how do we tell those stories at the same time as making sure that this is a really convenient place for players to go mm -hmm. and, you know, go shopping, as you know, they tend yeah. to do. 
So much adventuring happening on the Dragon Isles. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> As a player, you probably don't have your own dragon wings. You are going to learn the art of dragon riding. It's so vertical, and I'm just excited to like dive off the tops of towers and swoop under things. It's actually one of the things that we're about to learn about next. Oh my god, and customizing and everything. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm Andy. I'm, I'm Kali. And I'm Graham. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about the Drakthir Evoker, our new race and class coming in Dragonflight. We're here to talk about not only the Evoker, but also dragon riding, which is our exciting expression into the exploration of the Dragon Isles. We knew with a dragon-themed expansion, we wanted to let you play a dragon. Not a big dragon, Alex draws a size. That'd be tough to fit into raids. I'm sorry, Jake. Okay. I know, I know. <laughs> it's fine. But a draconic humanoid. So the Drakthir, created by Neltharion. And like our other hero classes, you get to choose if you want to start on the Horde or Alliance side on character creation. So let's talk a little bit about the Evoker, the class they can be. What's unique about it is because the, the Drakthir are created by an aspect, they have the ability to wield the magic of all five dragon flights. So Evokers can take advantage of red magic and blue magic and bronze magic. And to show that, we created a visual, what we call a prismatic effect. This prismatic effect is basically the coalescence of all their energy as they channel it into whatever spell that they're going to cast. You have a red magic spell called Pyre. So when you shoot it out of your mouth, it twirls in the air with all five of the Dragonflight's magic as it turns into the red spell before landing on your enemies and exploding and hopefully burning them. And I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that vibe across that they use all five was really important to us, but we did want to make sure that each specialization focused on two, because casting five different colors gets a bit messy. So their damage dealer specialization, their first of two, Devastation, mostly focuses on red and blue magic. Red being very fast and explosive, burning everything with pyre, whereas blue is more focused and overwhelming. You can shoot a beam of energy out of your mouth to disintegrate one single enemy in front of you. There's a healer spec called Preservation. The healer spec is gonna focus mostly on your green and your bronze magic. So your green is gonna be evocative of the Emerald Dream, your growth and your nurturing spells. And then you have your bronze magic, which is gonna be more timey-wimey. So you get to heal a wound faster. So in addition to the visuals and the animation, which all make you feel very powerful, we really wanted the player to have a physical connection to the cast. We have a new type of spell called Empower, where when you actually hold down the button on your keyboard, it charges up a spell. The longer you charge it up, it might do more damage or hit more targets, depending on the spell. But it gives you this really physical connection wow, and control. And it's new for World of Warcraft, and I think it's feeling That's really, cool. really good. We have some great animations. Thank you, Andy. You're you team. love it, Andy. You feel physical when you're casting your spells. You can actually fly around the battlefield and cast while you're flying. Raining fire and death from above. It's great. In addition to the gameplay, though, another part of feeling draconic is looking like a dragon. Well, we talk about dragons breathing fire, but you know what's actually fire? What's actually These fire? These customizations. Oh, my goodness. Hey. <laughs> but no, they're really, really they're cool. They're awesome. Because you have both your draconic form oh, and your humanoid form. I and love the, the customization options for both of them are I amazing. Want, they're very good. What but, about color? Just tell yeah, me tell you us about the, color. the color. You can do a lot of matching. So oh, your visage God, form can have cool. scales that are the same color as your draconic form. But my favorite? Super favorite part mm -hmm. of customization for the visage form, mm -hmm. hair. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I can like actually do this in game. In game. Yeah. The tech is here. <laughs> we finally did it. As players Ready. make their way through each of the areas of the Dragon Isles, they'll partner up with the Dragon Flights to move through the air as they've never done before. You'll notice I did not say flying, because <laughs> flight has a very specific meaning for World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And, and we're talking about something new called dragon riding. And as the players are honing their dragon riding skills, they're going to get to see all new animations that go along with the different look and feel yeah, of the drakes. We're aiming to shake up movement with this new system, providing players with a deeper immersion with forces like momentum and gravity. We knew that for Dragonflight, we were going to have the opportunity to show players a whole new set of Dragon Isle drakes, completely unique from all the other things they've seen in World of Warcraft. And so we wanted to come up with a movement system that would add that sense of physics, weight, and gravity, like you were mentioning. We knew it was going to take a huge team effort, not just animation, but it was going to take effects. It was going to take the engineering team, who we rely on heavily. And that, combined with some new animations, really helps to lend that feeling of physics as you move through the air 
in ways that you haven't before. And the icing on the cake is going to be some really cool effects that we've added on top of all of that. So for example, when you start hitting you know, maximum velocity, you're going to see contrails coming off the edges of the wings. And then as you do your rolls and spirals, you build up more and more speed. There's going to be some screen effects on the display to indicate that you're reaching maximum velocity, which really adds to the overall kind of immersion and sense of reality. As players make their way through the Dragon Isles, they'll discover new cosmetic options to fine-tune their Dragon Isle Drake's appearances. Things like snoots, horns, and tails, Aww. elusive Dragon Isle Drake armor, and more. Can I have spikes? Definitely. OK. We want to provide players with all new skills to play with, as those who can use their momentum well can reach higher and higher heights and bring on new, more difficult challenges. We just have so many new gorgeous options mm -hmm. to choose from, and I'm just so excited for all of them. I'm excited for the whole thing. I mean, it's been a lot of fun to work on, but I can't wait to actually get in the game, play it with you guys. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to fly around Dragon Isles. It's yeah. going to be great. Next up, you're going to hear about the talent revamp and the UI changes coming in Dragonflight. Sweet. Hello, my name is Brian. I'm Crash. I'm Jay. And I'm Laura. We are very excited to share, so we are finally revamping the WoW HUD UI. She and it is also time cool. for a major revamp to talents and specializations. I have a big question for the group. How long do you think it took for us to finally revamp the WoW HUD? My guess is like 15 years. Close, 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. Wow. You know, technology has changed a lot since we made the UI back in 2004. Now you have like bigger monitors and us, we have better dev tools to work with. So it makes sense to have the revamp right now. Also, if you look at the game today, the art evolved beautifully over the years. And if you look at the HUD, the HUD looks like it got frozen time. So when we approached this, we wanted to create a layout experience that players could customize, move things around, adjust it to fit their needs. Add-ons today, they do a lot for player customization. The downside is, is that not everybody uses them. It's about time that everybody has the opportunity to use them, that they become a part of the base UI. Yeah, and we are working very closely with our user research team to make sure we are hitting the goals that our player needs. It allowed us to add new functionality to improve accessibility in a lot of areas and on top of that, we are going to be improving the art. Yeah, so the art update, it's a big part of this project. The UI that we have today has a lot of charm and personality, and players have been using that for 18 years. So with that in mind, we want to respect the players who really like the current UI, but do more than take to it. Removing the clutter and giving more visibility for your gameplay. So the new minimap, it looks bigger, and the health bar is also much bigger. If you look like at the that. action bars and the bottom menus, they have less half frames, and you can really open up your gameplay, so you don't have a lot of your UI in front of you. And of course, we want to find iconic pieces from the current HUD, but we want to bring it back in a nice way. So we for sure updated the Griffins. They look so nice now. And the Horde, don't worry. We got you. Oh, You're going to have cool. your version as well. Why so let's talk about the edit mode. We are That's putting dope. a mode in that will let players move various HUD elements around on the screen. That's so good. I'm no able to move the tender. mini map, say, from the right corner all the way over to the left corner. If I want to bring my action bars from the bottom and kind of put them more in the center by my character, those are all things that I'll be able to do. Absolutely. And each of those different components will have various sets of options that you'll be able to work with. They'll be able to save it, edit it, copy it, name it. Also, That's it'll cool. remember which spec you're in. So if you're someone who jumps around a lot, as you switch, it will switch to whatever HUD layout you have for that spec. This is an ongoing project. We're going to keep working on it. So we really want to hear back from you. A project that we're all excited about that we've been collaborating a lot on is something that's pretty UI intensive, and that's the talent system. It hadn't changed in a long time, like you said before. And we really started with, how can we have players have more choice over what their character has? As you level up, we give you a new spell or a new ability, something that kind of makes you stronger, but it's, it's determined by the designers. We decide the order. Yeah, we started looking for a system that would give players a much wider set of options. And after looking at all those things, what we really returned back to was the idea of trees. 
but it's actually two trees. We have a, a class tree that offer different class utility, and then we have a spec tree that oh, is focused cool. on performing your role, whether that's damage tank or healing. Can I just jump in and say that I personally am super excited about having trees come back. Yes. There's a big nostalgia hit for me. As Same. we said, we have these two trees because we feel like picking a specialization is a really important part of your World of Warcraft character now. And so we want to make sure that when you choose that, it kind of affects the tree in some way. Yeah, as soon as you open your talent tree, you'll see something new. The class side will have some abilities filled out for free, just kind of starting you off in that spec you've chosen, but then you'll have your first point to spend in the class tree, which could be something related to that spec or role, or it could be something from elsewhere in the class. There's a lot of uh, things that we can do here, and That's part really of that cool. is encouraging players to perhaps make combinations that they've never really been able to see in the game before. Yeah. This is an opportunity to put a lot more art and fantasy in the actual talent UI itself. You have seen that a lot through most recent expansions, but not the base UI. We want you to be able to tinker with it. You know, we want you to be able to make a lot of changes at a lot of times and not necessarily have to commit. The power really is coming back to the player. Uh, it's not something we want people to feel locked into. And so one of the things that we'll be preserving is the ability to change these talents uh, at the same kind of frequency that you do now. Yeah, the old school players, when you see trees this time, just think, yeah, I'll, I'll go from my raid night to my arena match and figure out what I think is the best for both of those. And that's a process we want to make really fluid. So we're building a save load feature that lets you wow, create your build, name it, save it, and then load it up very quickly and freely. Talents were really about the breadth of options. We've made all these different cool things over the years, but when are they at their coolest? It's when players can hold the building blocks of what can make up their class, their spec, and put them together in a way that works for them. So yeah. these are really cool features that we've been working long and hard on, and we're very excited about them. And it's just an early preview of the things we've been doing. We can't wait to see the reaction that you have to them, and please reach out to us and let us know your thoughts on them. And next up, we're gonna talk about professions and Dragonflight. The little mining hat, the chef Hi, hat. I'm Joanna. And I'm Eric, and we're going to talk about our plans for professions in Dragonflight. Professions have been a staple of World of Warcraft forever, and they've seen lots of really cool incremental updates over their life. But for Dragonflight, we want to do something a bit different. We really want to rethink professions and figure out how to make them part of your identity as a player, if that's what you want. We really want to make sure that professions feel fun and relevant across all levels of gameplay. That brings us to our first update, something that we're calling Crafting Orders. If you want to have something crafted for you, but you don't have the skill or the right profession to do it for yourself, you can have it crafted through a crafting order. You can basically uh -huh. browse any of the recipes that can be crafted, uh, pick the one you want so for yourself, cool. and then you include some or all of the reagents needed for the recipe, including ones that only you can get your hands on. You can find someone in person to do it right in front of you for you. Or you can also go to an NPC and using an auction house-like interface, send the order out. If you're doing this, you can pick, do you want to send the order to wow, anyone sort of a public really cool. order? Or There's do you want to only like send it to your guild? Or to a specific want, other like, player? Maybe it's a friend who knows will be able to craft like, the item really well for you. If you it, are like, really dedicated you know, to your craft, you're going to be the good. best at what you do. One of the coolest that's things awesome. about this is the item you had crafted can also be soul bound. Really In the past, the you could only get your hands on crafted soul bound items by having that profession yourself. Now anyone can have them crafted for them, which is really That's neat cool. and really That's expands really, really the number of items that we can provide that are really powerful because everyone can have them crafted through the crafting That's order good. system. This is also really cool because it means as a crafter, you can start building your client base. People are going to come back to you to get certain items. Maybe you're the it's best at making like it, or you always throw a little something extra. You're also going to be leveling up your profession. It's going to be really great. So the first time wow, you go to craft, awesome. you're going to notice a lot of different things. But probably the biggest is the introduction of quality, both to your crafted items and your gathered reagents. Quality works in a pretty simple way. If you craft something that's a higher quality, it's just going to be better. For a piece of gear, that probably means a higher item level. If it's, for instance, a potion, you know, that might mean a more powerful effect at a higher quality. And we're doing a lot of new things in the UI. We've put a lot of work into it to make sure that the professions feel really special and unique. And another thing you might notice in the crafting UI that's new is the introduction of stats, specifically to your professions, both crafting and gathering. And this is another sort of major input into quality. Probably the biggest source of your ability to craft items at a higher quality is through crafting specializations. We've had crafting specializations in the past, as far back as original World of Warcraft. With Dragonflight, 
you can go out and earn specialization points in a whole bunch of different ways. So maybe you find an old book on a bookshelf in a ruin somewhere, or a hermit in a cave who can teach you a little bit about your profession. So let's say you're a blacksmith, and uh, you might decide that first you want to become an armor smith. And the more points you spend in armor smithing, the better you're gonna get at crafting all armor. This also means that if you specialize one way, other people in your guild may specialize in a completely different path. So this means that your guild could have several top blacksmiths and everybody is providing something unique and valuable to the team, which is really cool. Now that reminds me of another update. We're actually adding crafting tables to all the different crafting professions. Wow. We're gonna take those, and we're gonna put them all in the main city of Veldraken, and you know, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna get to see all the different players crafting their items at their cool crafting tables. That's really cool. Yeah, it means you're gonna walk into the city and you're gonna see like, all these alchemists huddled over here, and you're gonna see all these blacksmiths over by the forge. There will be that's other really players critical. filling orders or grabbing orders. It's gonna be a whole new crafting area that's gonna make you feel really part of the world. It just seems like a much more lively area than it has in the past. What I'm most excited about, though, is the gear. We're introducing new types of gear for oh, every profession. That's and so when you cool. go to, oh, say, mine so and node, cool. you're actually gonna just switch into that gear. It's gonna be really oh. great. You're not gonna have to yes, carry that stuff around yes, in your backpack yes, yes, anymore. That is cool. It's actually gonna be dedicated slots for each each of your pieces of gear. But I'm a numbers guy, I love progressing. All pieces of profession gear will have those special stats that we mentioned before on them. And as you get your hands on better versions of the gear, you know, it's really gonna help you get better at your profession. I can't wait. Wow. Thank you for this tuning in to the Dragonflight Deep Dive. You've heard a lot about the content and changes coming really in Dragonflight, and we've got a lot more in store for you in the coming months. Until then, wow. we'll see you in Azeroth. Wow. Is that it? Is that the whole thing? Or is more coming? Oh my god. Okay, I mean, like, yeah, that's cool. That's it, though? I feel like they should have said a goodbye or something. Is that actually all of it? Hello? Mm. Wow. Guys, that was pretty good. I am feeling good. Oh, wow, look, they're, like, already posting all the little things. I'm feeling good about this. I feel like that went super well. There wasn't one thing that they talked about where I was like, mm, I don't know. Oh, and they even have Alex Straza up here. Wow, I'm really excited to see her like in game. She looks really, really cool. Of course they, <laughs> it's just funny. You know how Alex Straza, Ysera, and Sylvanas used to all have like the same skimpy armor? And now they're all like covered up. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> but it looks really cool. I really, really like it. I am so excited. Um, I really enjoyed all of this. It was so good. Um, yeah. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that you guys are excited. Let me know your thoughts and everything. Um, I can't wait. I literally can't wait. Like, when is this coming out? Did they put any dates? Because I don't think that they did. <laughs> Let's Google it. Let's see if there's anything. Dragonflight expansion, oops, release date. When is it coming? Uh, we probably don't know yet. I am just antsy to know. I'm very, very excited. I don't know if I'm going to level my main first, which I always do for every expansion, which is my hunter that is named Sylvanas and looks like Sylvanas, so she's very special to me. Or if I'm going to make one of the Drakthir, because they looked really, really cool especially their human form customization stuff. But I feel like um, I feel like because probably most of the time when you're playing them, you'll be in dragon form, which I mean is cool, but I think the human form looks cooler. That might kind of sway me playing it because I don't I don't know. I like my character to look really aesthetic. And if I'm always going to be in the Drakthir form, I don't know if I could handle it really. But this is really exciting. I love the logo. Like it's just really really cool it's so unique compared to all the others i can't wait to buy the collector's edition i wonder what's all going to be in there and i'm just really excited i'm excited for professions um i want to see all the cute little outfits and stuff that you can wear and all that um i'm excited for the ui stuff i won't have to use bartender anymore um it just it just all sounds really good i'm really excited i am so happy it seems like they really did like they did good i feel like this is what we needed um, and I can't wait. 
and I feel like we're entering a new era and I'm just really, really excited. So yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to go edit some of this stuff and get my reaction up uh, where I'm just crying like an idiot the second that Alex Draza comes in. I don't know. I was, I was emotional today. I don't know. I got like an hour and a half of sleep because I was like sick. Kind of, I, I felt like I had to throw up all night, but it was one of those things where like you feel like you have to throw up, but you're not throwing up, so it's just keeping you awake, and like you keep going to the bathroom to try to throw up, and you're there for like two hours, and then you're just like crying because it's not happening. So I had a rough night. Uh, Alex Straza was emotional for me, and I really liked the Titan Watcher guy, and I thought that he was gonna die. So I mean, when she swooped in, I just I wasn't expecting it, and <laughs> it made me really really happy. And like I said, I just read. Dawn of the Aspects recently, so dragons are very close to me right now. But uh, yeah, so I think that that's it. I'm going to stop rambling. Um, I am excited. I hope you guys are excited, and um, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!